This video walks you through the Excel worksheet preparation for the LA Gear ROE decomposition. There are a number of tabs in this worksheet. First, a background tab. Then there's a tab with a balance sheet where we'll prepare a common size balance sheet and a balance sheet as percentage of sales. There's an income statement tab where we'll prepare a common size income statement and uh, trends for our income statement. There's a tab for preparing a cash flow statement for calculating ratios for LA Gear. And then finally, a tab for evaluating those ratios. Let's begin by taking a look at how we prepare a common size balance sheet. On a common size balance sheet, we scale every single item on our balance sheet by total assets. So we're going to take our cash of $4,205 and divide it by our total assets. Now, one important thing we're going to want to do here in order to speed our work is to remember the difference between relative and absolute cell references. In Excel, when we copy formulas, formulas copy over as relative cell references. That is, when we copy it one column to the right, the columns increment by one letter, and we copy it down the rows increment by one number. To maintain an anchored reference, and in this case, we're always going to want to be coming back to row 15 for total assets, we can put a dollar sign in front of the 15. Once we have our formula in, we can copy and paste it. Line the crosshairs up with the small square in the bottom right-hand corner of the rectangle. Uh, click on the left-hand button of your mouse. Drag it down. Let the button up. Line it up again. Click with the left mouse button and drag it across. Now we have a common size income statement. If we want, we can easily go ahead and re-add the formatting. So we'll put a line there under prepaid expenses, and we'll put a line there. Uh, we'll put a line, the same line, under our total assets. And then, of course, we can double underline underneath total assets. We will be using the same formula for our liabilities and equities. So we can go back up, copy that formula down to the line of credit, and again, left click on the uh, lower right hand corner, drag it down and drag it across. And again, we can go back in and reinstall our formatting with our line. Our common size balance sheet tells us our relative portion of each one of our individual asset categories as percentage of total assets. Back in 1988, our cash consisted of 3.1% of our total assets. And we can see it's now down to less than 1% of total assets. So cash as a percentage of total assets has been falling. Accounts receivable has grown from 37% of assets to 42% of assets. So our accounts receivable balance has been growing relative to all of our assets, while our inventories have been shrinking relative to total assets. If we were down look at our current liabilities, our current liabilities have decreased as a percentage of total assets from 66% down to 43%. And equity is accounting for a larger portion of our total financing. Back in 1988, 33% of our assets were financed with equity. Today, 56% of our total assets are financed with equity. Another statement that we might want to prepare, you won't be required to prepare it for the exam, is a balance sheet as a percentage of sales. For our balance sheet as a percentage of sales, we take every single item on our balance sheet. We've got cash of $4,205 and we divide that by sales. So we'll click on the income statement tab and we'll go up to sales for 1988. We're 222, uh, 223,000. And again, we're always gonna be wanting to come back to row six. So we'll put a dollar sign in front of the row six, nothing in front of the B because we want the column to change as we copy it across. We've got our formula. We can copy it down and we can drag it across. And again, we'll use the same formula, copy it down to the liabilities and equity section of our balance sheet, and copy it down, and copy it across. And of course, we can always reinstall our formatting. Our asset turnover ratio was sales divided by assets. That was a measure of how efficient we were at using our assets to generate sales. Our balance sheet as a percentage of sales is just the inverse of that assets divided by sales. It's basically giving us the same information. 
Back in 1988, we had 59 cents in assets for every dollar in sales. By 1990, that was 40 cents in asset for every dollar in sales. So you can see we've become relatively more efficient at generating sales with our assets. We'll look at that further when we get over to our financial ratios and look at our turnover ratios. Let's move on and look at uh, preparing a common size income statement. Our common size income statement scales or standardizes everything in our income statement by total sales. So we'll take our sales of 223,000 in 1988 and divide it by total sales, the same number. And again, we want to anchor the reference to row six. Once we have that, we can copy it down and of course, copy it across. Our common size income statement is very useful. It gives us a measure of changes in our overall profitability. If we look at our bottom line net income as a percentage of sales, we can see back in 1988 we were making nine, almost ten cents in every dollar in sales, and by 1990 that had dropped down to less than three and a half cents in profit for every dollar in sales. And our common size income statement tells us where we've had our problems. We can see cost of goods sold has gone up. Our cost of goods sold used to be 57 cents for every dollar in sales. Now it's costing 65 cents to generate every dollar in sales, which of course means our gross profit margin has gone down accordingly. It is now costing us more than the industry average, which is 60 cents in cost for every dollar in sales. In terms of other, other line items on our income statement, our selling and administrative expenses as a percentage of sales have gone up. We used to be spending 23 or 24 cents for every dollar in sales for selling an admin that has now increased to over 26 cents. Um, our tax expense has gone down, however, from six or seven cents in the dollar down to two cents, which shouldn't be very surprising because our profits have gone down. Our taxable income as a percentage of sales has dropped from 16 cents in profit for every dollar down to five cents. So we would expect proportionally our taxes also to go down. Let's go ahead and take a look now at our income statement trends. For our income statement trends, we'll take every item on our uh, income statement and divide it by the same account using the base year. So for sales for 1989, we'll take our 1989 sales and divide it by the base year sales of 223,000. Since we always want to come back to the year 1988, we want to come back to column B. In this case, instead of anchoring the row, We'll put a dollar sign in front of the B to anchor the reference to the B. We would have gotten 275%. This means that our sales in 1989 are 2.75 times as much as our sales in 1988. To make it more useful, we'll subtract off 1. In other words, our sales have gone up by 175% in 1989. In 1990, our sales have gone up by 300%. Again, that's relative to the base year of 1988. So in one year, sales went up by 175%. Over the two-year period, they were up 303%. We can copy those down. And we can see that while sales have grown by 300% over the past two years, our bottom line net income has only gone up by 42%, and this is what we found with our common size income statement. Our profitability has gone down, and the reason for that is while sales are up 300%, our cost of goods sold are up 358%. Our depreciation expense is up 600%. And so as long as our costs are going up faster than sales, we will indeed find a decrease in our overall profit margins.